Okay, guys, I have an absolute legend with me today on Dave's LFC Chats. It is Liverpool Force Team goalkeeping coach John Octorberg. He's an absolute legend for doing this, and it's a pleasure to be chatting to him from sunny Dublin today. John, how are you? I'm, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Well, to be honest, I, uh, it's warm over here in Dublin. It's very cloudy. I'm good. We've had a fantastic season. We're living the dream with Liverpool and Jürgen Norbert Klopp. And you're part of his staff. You're one of the main men. So I'm in a great humour. Absolutely great humour. But um, yeah. do you know what we're going to do? We're going to go back in time. I, I'm a 70s boy like you. So we're going to go back in time to when you were yeah. a child growing up in Holland in Utrecht. I think I pronounced that right. Um, yeah. As a kid, did you always want to be a goalkeeper? Um, I started as a player. And then my dad was always a goalie. And then we were... I think when I was about eight short of a goalie, so I said, I'll go in, and that's what happened, and I stayed in there. So, and from there, yeah, you, we had a lot of uh, youth teams, so we had about, I think, 24 youth teams, so I played in goal in my own team, and I played in every other team I play in any positioning I could play, so I always had two, three games in, in, in the weekend, so it was fun to do. I actually played in goal myself up to about under 13s, but I wasn't tall enough like you, John. I was only 5'10", so I wasn't tall enough, but I did love the agility. I'm a bit mad. I think you'd be a bit mad to be a goalkeeper. Ask Bruce Grobler, I'm sure. But um, So I do know a bit about goalkeeping. Then I, I, I played outfield further on, but uh, only at a, a low, low level. But uh, So as I said, growing up in Holland, Utrecht, you started playing, I think, professionally for NAC Breda, was it in 93? No. <laughs> I started in my hometown, Utrecht. I was there six years. Yeah. So, and for after I left Utrecht, I was three years the number two in Utrecht. And then I left to NEC Breda, where I made my debut. So, yeah, uh, in Utrecht, I never had a chance to play a competitive game in the first team. But uh, I was there three years the number two. Then moved NEC, and I think I played about 15 games in the first wow. Uh, then SEI Hoven, I think, later then, on until 96. Yeah, I wanted to be um, a number one myself, so um, <laughs> I played 15 games in NEC in the, in the Premier League there, and then I moved to Eindhoven, the division below, and was there two seasons, and then obviously moved from there to Tranmere, and yeah, probably... Became a legend. Uh, Became a legend at Tranmere Rovers. Um, uh, that's for other people to decide. I'm just trying to do the best I can, and that's it. Uh. I, I did a bit of homework on you from '98 to zero nine. You played for Tranmere Rovers. Um, so I mean, you've had a few. You had a few great cup runs. I think you beat Southampton and you beat Everton, which is always good <laughs> in the cup. And Millwall, I think you had a big, you beat, you had a big man of the match performance against Millwall in the FA Cup. I think you were top, top goalkeeper in that game. Uh, yeah, I was okay to be honest, but uh, yeah, we had, we had a lot of uh, Premier League teams we beat. We, we beat, I think, uh, Sunderland at home as well. Yeah, obviously, I was entering over two games. Uh, I forget a few, but uh, and obviously, the main one, uh, Everton at home of away, it was 3 0. And then, then the next round, we played Liverpool, of course, in the quarters, we lost, and Liverpool end up winning it, of course. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, we had. I think we got three times to the last eight of the FA Cup and one time to the final. Wow. So on the Cup runs, it was pretty good. Only on the yeah to stay in the league was a bit difficult because you know, we had in the end too many games to catch up with all the Cup runs, and then the team was not uh, big enough in squad, and uh, we got relegated really. So and they never came back since then, and yeah. All the difficulty with the money is is one major issue, and now they are back in League Two, so they get back up. And you know, uh, nowadays you you need to rely on sponsor really to to have a chance to get higher up. And I think, yeah, I think Trummy will be always be League One, and if they are lucky to get promoted to uh, bottom Championship uh, maximum really uh, level, or they need to find a generous uh, sponsor who can yeah. turn it. Um, Liverpool, of course, came knocking. It was a 2009 for the reserves and the academy. You, you came into Liverpool. What, what was that like, getting the step up, I think, from Tranmere down to Liverpool? 
Yeah, I mean, I did uh, I did a lot of coaching. I started, I think, when I was 24, doing all the goalkeeper yeah. while I was playing in Eindhoven. I did the whole academy and the reserves, and and then I did the local team, the first team in all the academy in Holland. And and, and then, obviously, I started pretty quick uh, in, in England. I, I, I had most of the licenses uh, while I was playing. I part of the outfield pro license. Liverpool, I had every other license uh, before I finished playing. Yeah. So I did the, the coaching. I was playing coach at Trami. I did uh, all the academy, and I, in the end, I was playing coach. So I had already quite a bit of experience coaching. I think I had about five, six years non stop uh, in, in Trami and did all my own goalkeeping school, scouting goalkeepers and creating goalkeepers, which what I've been doing and that uh, worked in Tramia. Quite a few goalkeepers got to the first team and made some games in the first team that didn't happen before. And um, I think I had about five who, or four or five who, who made it uh, uh, to that level and later played uh, in still in professional, most of them still playing there. So that's a positive thing. And obviously when I came to Liverpool, I tried to do the same. Yeah, and you've done a brilliant job, I must say. But in 2011, then, you became the, the number one goalkeeping coach, the senior goalkeeping coach, I presume you would call it. I mean, you've worked with some unbelievable keepers, Pepe Reina. I mean, look at the boys now. I'll talk to you about them now in a minute. I mean, world-class level uh, goalkeeper. I mean, Pepe Reina was one of the best goalkeepers for me. He was brilliant. He was one of the first keepers to see, I've seen that could actually play with his feet. I'd say he was a nightmare in five aside. He was one of the, you know what I mean? I mean, are they the attributes as, as, a, as a modern goalkeeper? Because I'm not saying it's a new thing, but it, it, every goalkeeper seems to be able to be able to play outfield in a five-a-side now. Do, do, is it, is it a, a big aspect of being a, a modern goalkeeper now? Um, it's, it's one part of goalkeeping, of course. Uh, in, in the way we play, it has to be good. But uh, I think you need to create all all around goalkeepers. You know, you need to have good speed reactions. You need to be able to make clean sheets. Uh, and and I think uh, the biggest job is still to keep the ball out the net. And and I think uh, especially in Holland they forget that. You know that a goalkeeper need to make match winning. And next to it, he needs to be able to play with the ball. And but you need to be good on crosses. You need to be good in one v one situations. So you have to be all around in in the way we play. You have to play high lines and sweep up well, you know, and, and read the game well. So, and if you teach this type of goalkeeper, then you can play in any team. But if you play in the defensive team, then it's difficult to switch. And that's how I grew up in, in Holland, yeah. in that way of play. So I, it suited me. And, and that's uh, why I think Liverpool took me on as well, because they play this type of football and I create this type of goalkeeper. So... Um, and that is a big process you try to to do, and 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 obviously that's also how you scout goalkeepers and look at goalkeepers. And yeah, I started uh, with Benitez. Uh, I had one year, I think, uh, with the reserves and the whole academy. And since they left, they uh, I started temporary with Roy Hodgson at the first team, and then after four weeks, he asked if I would want to stay and. Then I did, I think, still till Brendan Rodgers came, all the academy and the first team together. So that was long day, seven, seven days a week, eight to eight was wow. uh, regular. But then I had the energy as well to do it. So, um, so uh, you know, I enjoy every day and, and still do that. So uh, no complaint on my side. <laughs> no, listen, if, you were, if I was to walk into work every day and Jurgen Klopp was the boss... I was working with the likes of world-class talent like Alison Becker, Kelleher, fellow Irishman like me, Kelleher. I mean, Adrian, young Petaluga, another, I think, Petaluga coming up through. I mean, Carius, all these guys. If I was coming to work like that, I mean, I'd be, I'd be skipping into work. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we still have Harvey Davis as well. And, 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 yeah. And our, so we have quite a few, but... Uh... Yeah, it, it all started with the boss, uh, if you if you want to put it that way, and and the owners who put the money in, of course, as well. Mm. 
was uh, to to help him funding. But in the end, the boss uh, creates the team and the club uh, to the new level. And he also changed the supporters' uh, belief and, and the supporters being behind the team from the first to the last minute. So all the credit is uh, for the boss. And, and everyone knows that, you know, we, we're not stupid. Uh, you know, you know, you can have good players, but you still have to create a team. And yeah. I think that with uh, with Pep and 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 Pete, and then obviously Feet came in as well. So and 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 in the other side, we uh, got Jack in and uh, and Tafe, and so the team uh, got bigger and bigger. And that's all about the manager try to create uh, more hands to have more con- continuity uh, on in every department. So. Uh, you know, uh, he always looks uh, for improvement, and and we all do really. We all want to be looking and and working on the front foot, and that's how we work and try to develop. I mean, Klopp comes across to me like like he's a perfectionist. I mean, you know, everything is right down to the littlest, smallest detail in everything. Even in the food, I hear at Kirby. I mean, it's just. Unbelievable. So is he is he a perfectionist? What does he like to work for? I presume I love his laugh. We all love his laugh and his hugs. I love a hug off him. But it must be it must be unbelievable. Yeah, but but he shows that through all his career. No, uh, he started at Mainz, turned them around, and uh, and improved them a lot. And then he go to Dortmund. Uh, you know, win the win the league, win the cup, go mm-hmm. to the champ with 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 limited funds. And and always uh, had to compete with Bayern, and and now we produce the same when we have to compete with all the big clubs in England. So, um, and and you know all the credit is for him. That is how how it is. So uh, yeah, every department he changed, he got in uh, with the new training ground, but also Mike Gordon and and the owners John Henry and and Tom Werner had a big input as well to to help make it happen. Of course, you know. Um, I also was there when the club was not in a good position, and I also saw how it all been changed around to a positive uh, situation. And you know, and obviously uh, the boss was the missing link, and the boss uh, changed the whole club to new levels. And and hopefully we can keep doing that. And and he stays longer, which makes everyone in Liverpool happy. I would say. I mean, it's unbelievable. I've been following Liverpool since I was a kid, probably mid-80s, and I've seen the good times in the 80s. I've seen the not-so-good times in the 90s and the noughties. Obviously, we won European Cups and, and FA Cups and stuff like that. But since Klopp came in in October 15, it has just been different level. Let's put it that way. And it's been it's been a dream. It's been a dream watching you guys. And I mean, you're part of it. You're part of it. The LFC family, I suppose. It's this group mentality and I just think what he's brought to Liverpool and just brought us to new levels has just been the greatest signing we've ever made, probably, is Jurgen Klopp himself. And he's not a player. Do you know what I mean? But um, what, I want to ask you about Kelleher, because he's a fellow Irish man uh, like me, Cork man. I'm a Dublin man. But um, Kelleher, he must be very happy with young Kelleher. I mean, he's playing for Ireland the last few games. I've seen him in the senior team. He's played really, really well. The League Cup final, man of the match performance, even scoring a goal. Um, you were proud of him in the league cup final. That was great for him, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, we've been working hard to get the goalkeeping squad. I think to know oh, and uh, you know I cannot be more happy with the situation. You know you need a good squad and you need a good balanced team as well. And and obviously, uh, yeah, the boys. Uh, have their own credit for everything they did. You no, know, Ali, the way he plays, and and Quiv, what he did, uh, and where he comes from, and and learn a lot over the years, and and make every time the next step. You know, learn off each other. You know, uh, Adrian, of course, uh, had had done a good job too when he came in. You know, won the Super Cup and got the first eleven games on the way yeah. when we won the. Yeah. So, yeah. You all have big parts in the situation, and uh, what w- what I like most, and what I'm a bit proud of, was in the league Cup that all the goalkeepers played uh, some part in it. Yeah. Adrian says in the Preston game, Ali played in the home game against Arsenal because he needed the game, made a good save one v one, and then Queef Norwich uh, made a penalty save, uh, Leicester made a few penalty saves, and obviously the final. Where he also uh, had a great uh, game and and scored a winning penalty, if you like, and 
um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's great, and we all been able to put them on the on the wall in training. And, uh, and Ali even said to uh, to us, it would be great if if uh, if Kweef could be on there as well if we win it. So you know, and that, and that means also the respect between each other is really good, and that is also part of creating a team. No, uh, Tafarel came in halfway in the season and and helped out uh, with the training next to Jack. So uh, so yeah, we all uh, try to push it forward and. You know, and try to create the next one uh, who comes up. Uh, always is the aim to um, make your own goal, create your own goalkeepers. Uh, and if they cannot play in the first team for Liverpool, we try to make them. Good. There's quite a few goalkeepers out there now in in the leagues uh, who played uh, and, and came through the the ranks uh, as a goalkeeper. You know, and and hopefully we can produce keep producing that and. The goalie coaches in the academy, of course, have a hand in that as well. Who we'll work them till they are uh, 15, 16, and then as soon as we think we can use them and bring them up, we bring them up. And yeah, you know, we can always improve more, especially in the academy with more goalkeeping training. But then everyone has to be in the, in the right right uh, frame of mind and and behind it, and then. We can create more and, and, and better goalkeepers in the future as well if we get the right profile through the door because that's always uh, the start of it. So hopefully uh, we can keep working hard on it, all the goalkeeper coaches in the academy and, and the first team and, and, and keep uh, doing well and enjoying the way the goalkeeper's playing. So, uh, But always have to prepare for... Uh, have everything really and always keep looking and, and try to scout new goalkeepers too so that is all part of the job Brilliant Dan you're doing an absolutely brilliant job I heard about that mural wall I think it was talking to James Pierce at the time and he was telling me about that wall you have and Kelleher was going on to it which was a, I think it was a really great touch but um, we have to talk to you about one iconic moment in the last few years of course we all know about the Allison header against West Brom. I know you must have talked about 50,000 times. This is the thing, John, you'll be talking to your grandkids about. Don't don't ever forget it. I mean, I've heard so many different stories, so it's just great to hear it from the main man himself. I mean, what, what was what was that like and how did that progress? Did you tell him to go up or did he was he going up anyway? Uh, I don't I don't want to talk too much about it, right? Like, because you know, it's all the credit is for Ali. Uh, it, it it was also an emo, emotional situation yeah. with what Ali and, and the sad story on his dad and the tragedy. So, you know, obviously we're in a difficult positioning. You know, uh, we, I think we were 10 points behind the top four on one stage. You know, a lot of injuries, uh, some bad challenges uh, in, in, the, in the game where we lose players a bit and stuff like that. And obviously, it was, I think it was three games before the end. And... Uh, we were still uh, quite a few points behind. And it was the 94th minute and basically he put up four minutes extra time and there was the corner. So, you know, and I was just in the mode. It was 1-1 uh, and I was in the mode like we need to win because otherwise it, it's over. So, and I, I just shouted, Ali, get in the box. And then he started running and obviously the rest is history and... You know, it's up. It's about him scoring the goal. Really, it's it's great, and it gives the team a boost at that time as well. Because obviously, we had still had to play Burnley away, and it was a, every game was a must win because uh, we were five points behind. One game, so uh, we had to carry. So uh, hopefully, and and then what happened was. Uh, yeah, everyone get a boost. You know, we'd be in the in the, in the changing uh, room all uh, on fire, uh, and and uh, yeah, we've been burned away, closed the gap, and obviously we managed to uh, finish even second in the last game because the results went our way. And you know, uh, but all the credit is gone to the players and and the, and the boys who did an amazing job. You know, the two young centre halves as well. Who yeah, yeah, had to be. And had to be uh, faultless, really, as well. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was great to to uh, achieve it, and you know, to make Champions League for the squad we had was needed as well. And obviously, we end up uh, making the final of it, and 
unfortunately didn't win it, uh, which is a shame. But, uh, you know, we tried our best. We're going to go in a few minutes, but I just want to talk to you about last season. 63 games. I mean, that was a hectic season. Three cup finals. We won the League Cup. We won the FA Cup, which were absolutely brilliant. You were in, obviously, in Paris. I was in Liverpool the weekend. You guys were in Paris. I couldn't get a ticket for Paris, but I think Liverpool was the best place to be if you couldn't get to Paris. I mean, Liverpool is a party city anyway, and it was just unbelievable. I was actually flying out of Liverpool, the John Lennon Airport, on the Sunday. I couldn't make the parade, and you guys were flying in. I was flying out back to Dublin. But what was the day like, uh, the parade? The parade looked wow. Yeah, you know, it's madness. The the energy the players uh, give, you know, you get goosebumps and sometimes tears in your eyes if you see the emotion that the people give to to the players and to, to the team, you know. That, that gives any energy for you want to go straight away to the new season, really. And that's how I feel. I know the boys need a break because they get overloaded games. But, uh, yeah, it, it's great feeling. And, and that's uh, what you do it for, you know, make the people happy, but also try to win. And, it, you know, obviously we all wanted to win one of the two big uh, trophies as well next to the two groups we, we won. And, and, you know, obviously they were the first... Uh, uh, cups for the boss to win so on that side it was good as well and and you know now we just hope that we can reproduce it and it would be nice that we can uh, celebrate one time the league uh, with the with the whole people in in Liverpool and all the supports all over the world because obviously with the COVID it was not possible and I guess you know that would uh, smash the records as well then I think that would be at least one million on, on the roads and you know, it's a special, special to to see it, and I think it's only Liverpool who can produce that. There's no other club, and you can you can see that in the world who, who can produce something like this. You know, and 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 yeah, that's the magic from Liverpool. I mean, it, look, yeah, I mean, I, as I say, I'm Ireland. Dublin, Liverpool are similar sort of cities. Twist, probably through history, they're like sister and brothers. Is you know, cities, but. Um, as I say, it's been an unbelievable season. We didn't we didn't win the FA, we didn't win the Champions League, didn't win the league. It was very, very close, right down to the last second in both of the games. Could have bit of luck, could have gone went either way, but I'm proud of the lads, proud of the team, proud of the fans, proud of everybody because it was an unbelievable season. I'm gonna let you go now in a minute, but just before we go, two lads, well, Manny hasn't left, but I presume he's leaving, and Origi has left. Have you any memories in your mind or little funny things about Origi? Because he's a he's a legend, he's a club legend, and so is Sadio. Two of them, sad to see them go, but football cyclical, life is cyclical. We bring in Nunes, we you know, we 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 just keep going, we keep progressing, we don't sit still, Liverpool doesn't sit still. But any little memory maybe from Origi, he looks like a funny guy, you know, or Sadio. They look too funny, lads. I'm sure they did little hoaxes or funny things, no? Uh they did. They, they. They're both good guys, and and obviously Origi, uh, you know, scoring that uh, last minute uh, Everton goal. That that was uh, obviously the, in the final he scored a world, and he scored quite a few against Everton, really. So, he, he, you know, but he, he always uh, produced uh, like Wolves away, also a uh, last minute goal. So, you know, he could always do something magic, and and. Uh, yeah, he did a lot for the club and he will be, like the boss say, a living legend. And, and that's how it is. And he's, a, and he's a very cool guy as well. He's a top guy. And yeah, Sadio, so. looks, well, it looks like Sadio's gone. I know it's not 100%, but he, 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 he's been a legend for the club. But I mean, as you say, I think it's so important for the club. We, we, it just keeps progressing. We don't sit still, you know. Yeah, that's the way yeah. it is. It's a shame, of course, uh, you know, Sadio win all the trophies as well here. And, and obviously, I read in the, in, in the, in the press the same uh, as you uh, read. So, uh, you know, things like that happen. And, uh, yeah, we need to try to improve and, and keep going. And, and, you know, if one player decides to leave, we have to try and find a solution and, and make them. And I'm pretty sure that. We, we uh, carry on working and the owners uh, think the same and, and the scouting department, they will try to help us find new players and the boss and Pep and Pete will also look at the players again to find the yeah. best ones. And in the end, we still have a lot of good players, a good young players who can make the next step and have to take the next chances as well. You know, uh, we have a lot of uh, talented players, Jonesy, Elliot, 
and Calvario coming in. So they are boys. They have to take the chances uh, as well. Uh, and probably I forgot one or two next to all the experienced good players we have. So we have a good squad. And now we have to try to improve again and work hard. And hopefully we can do it again. Yeah, um, before you go, congratulations to Alison Becker, of course, and getting the Golden Glove. I know he shared it with his fellow countryman, Ederson, but you must be proud for Alison getting that. I, I, as a goalkeeper, clean sheets are like getting top goal scorer, isn't he? It's all about clean sheets. Yeah, I, I think uh, Ali had an unbelievable season. He was really consistent from the first day, kept in lot, lots of games. Probably uh shame that uh, in the Champions League game, uh, Coutoir played well um, because I think oh. uh, if I saw all, all the games and, and I, I watched a lot of football then Ali was probably the most consistent goalie this, last year in probably in the world I would say but yeah. that's for other people's side you know we need to focus on the new season and and, uh, and hopefully uh, we can keep another good season with the goalies uh, we have and all stay fit that's the Let's let's hope, John. Well, I'm going to leave it there. And um, thank you very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, brilliant stuff. Hope to do it again sometime. But um, as I say, John Octoberg, stay safe yourself and your family, and let's go again next season and enjoy it. No problem. Good luck. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. bye.